Ooh. Yeah, the, I'm a. Uh... Okay, we're officially the kingdom live. Definitely exists outside the purview of um, uh, of Square. Is all stuff that Disney seems rather now it doesn't doesn't really want to fuck with it because one they know the fans will absolutely lose their minds if Square isn't directly involved on anything big. And two, Disney really only wants to have everything in its hands and no one else's. So the idea of like a joint project, especially with the current Disney, just feels weird to them. They just don't want to do that at all. Which is why it's kind of mind blowing that Sora was the pick. Oh, I. I mean, they made a big deal about the fact that, as I had been asking all along, it was the number one vote for the the contest they had like literally yeah years ago now. like they never released the results of that years ago yeah. precisely so that people don't yell at them yeah i, I mean surprising. don't blame me i voted for ridley <laughs> no i blame you because ridley sucks <laughs> damn uh, i don't even know who i voted damn for. boy out here going for the juggler I, I regret to i regret to say that it was well, I don't regret to say that it was extremely funny to me that, like, 70% of the people I saw who were very uh, intense about how they need Ridley to be in the game essentially never played Ridley. I mean, I was trying Ridley again today just almost out of nostalgia, and I was like, you know what, this guy ain't bad. <laughs> yeah, it's That's just like, cool. a lot of people seem to want him in there, but have no actual desire to play as him. Yeah, no, I mean, Ridley represents the fact that people still remember the Metroid series, which right now doesn't seem that important. Ridley's a cool it's guy. A very... uh, he's a, he's a dragon, man. Mm. You know, he wiped out Samus' whole family. And... Yeah, he seemed like kind of dick. <laughs> okay, well, not a cool guy. Eaten, but, no. I'm not clear. Still a big boy, at least. <laughs> I made an extreme mistake early. What'd you, what'd you do? Oh, measuring out how much uh, rice I was putting in the mask. And <laughs> making ungodly amount of rice. So for once, I'm not hungry. <laughs> and so, fun fact, you can always just have more rice later. Oh yeah, it's extremely easy to just put rice in a refrigerator and then eat it later. Sometimes I just, like, eat it with, like, some kind of barbecue sauce or something and just call it a You thing. can put just about anything on this, and it's like, oh, the rice is not quite this flavor. <laughs> we are sharing hot rice tips tonight on stream. The very hottest. Sometimes cold rice. But... but, yeah, in any case, this uh, clip of Donald Duck screaming, I like the loud bass, is kind of hellish, and it's... Another like sign of the the weakened state of Disney in 2001. Yes, for those of you who are just joining us, we oh, were yeah. talking about Disney Dance Dance Mix or whatever the hell that was called. Dance Dance Revolution Disney Mix. And I, oh yeah, I, 2001 I, I Disney and um, uh, current day Disney are very different things. Mm -hmm. I, I lit upon the hell hellish uh, the hellish object that is. Uh, it's a small world, parentheses, ducking hardcore mix, which is in that game. Ducking, as in Donald Duck. Yeah. But also, but it's also ducking like. Ducking hardcore. No, no, it doesn't like mean anything a, else. In a cute little wink to um, uh, everyone else. Fucking. It's the word <laughs> fucking. But yeah, Konami did that, and it starts with Donald Duck screaming, I like the loud bass over and over. Yeah, no, Ooh. that sounds. Sounds dark and terrible. Yeah, that sounds wrong. But I'm hellish, yeah. Sounds absolutely miserable. I have no idea why they would why they would do something like that. <laughs> DDR was very uh, tuned into Eurodance. Wait, what year was this? 2001. I know exactly why they would do that. <laughs> also, Pooch from uh, Pooch just says Metroid and Rice just for the kind of figure out a lot of streams to hear them. Hey. <laughs> Uh, no, I know exactly why they would do that. Uh, Mike Eisner was notorious, almost infamous, for um, uh, doing literally anything if he thought there was like a, um, a sliver of a hope of a chance that would make his son think he was cool. Nothing ever did. I kind of, I kind of appreciate that more than like fucking Bob Iger's profit, uh, profit-seeking golem behavior. <laughs> oh no, no, that was that was that was um, uh, that was Eisner as well. He is famous for saying, "Yeah, but um, uh, 
this this like really long quote about how we are not in the business of making art, but if we really care about money enough, we'll just sort of make art by accident. <laughs> the difference is to me that Eisner had like clearly things that he liked to the detriment of essentially everything. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you had shit like the fucking like Hollywood limo ride at Disneyland. Oh god, I don't that thing. Think Bob Iger has things that he likes. <laughs> That's a um, uh, that's a good way to put it, actually. I'm uh, like I'm a uh, Mike Eisner, while being you know the absolute picture. Mike Eisner of a um, uh, of a piece of shit CEO. Oh, would i um, uh, yeah would do dumb things from time to time, just because you know he thought it would like as like I said he thought it would make his son think he was cool. Uh, but he yeah. wasn't the CEO. It's impossible <laughs> whereas, for whereas... to be cool. Yeah, whereas, like, Iger was, like, some horrible prophet Terminator. Yeah, no, Iger, <laughs> Iger simply thinks so about of money and nothing else. Oh, what, what did I miss? What context am I missing here? We're just talking about Disney in general. Yeah. The monster, the abomination, you know. The Monstars? <laughs> Space Jam 2? Space that's Jam 3? Amazingly, amazingly, that's not a Disney thing. Amazingly. Really? Yeah. Really? The, the, what, Space Jam? Yeah, it's WB. Not. But no, the thing maybe, that I maybe. feel, the thing that I feel must be endlessly reiterated about Disney, and like cannot be allowed to be forgotten about Disney, and this is the last time I'll soapbox tonight. I promise. <laughs> you know me. You've gotten it over. It's um, uh, <laughs> is uh, I'm a guy who likes movies because I also like art. It's also kind of why I like video games. Right? They are important to me. They are, they are um, uh, a means of expression. And yes, they're corporate as shit and everything, but. They are still like a valid form of art in um, uh, in of itself, right? Like we all can agree that film is an art form, right? Or is this is fucking controversial. Um, and Disney, being that it just box bought Fox Studios, is now by a huge margin the largest film company in the entire world, by an enormous margin. Like they're they are. They are so much bigger than, than the secondary runner-up. It's ridiculous. That's why they could do shit like their very own version of Netflix and everything else, right? That's 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 that was what allows them to and be. Why everyone else convinces themselves that they can manage that? Thing. Right. Problem is, while they are the largest uh, film company in the world, the largest source of film in, in the entire world, uh, they are not actually a movie company. They are a vacation company. <laughs> their um, uh, their profit margins on um, uh, the, the, the the share of their profits is about like um, uh, for their um, uh, for their resorts and their hotels, and their Disney Worlds, their Disneyland's, all that shit is, I believe, in total twice that that they make off of movies, and they make a lot off movies. So the amount they make off of their um, uh, resorts and shit is where their actual bread and butter is. That is their actual- Movies are an ad time. for the resorts. The <laughs> movies are an ad for the resorts. More and that means, accurate. And that means you have a situation where they are the biggest in the world in one thing that they don't even want to do unless it's an advertisement for their other thing. So like when fucking Martin Scorsese um, uh, burned a bunch of bridges like a, like a year and a half, like almost two years back now, saying that um, uh, the Marvel movies were theme park rides, in a way he was right because the entire goal was sooner or later we can put this into our resort and make a shitload of money. I That's mean they it. also are just paced like roller coasters. I mean yes they are that too like you know he was right on two levels <laughs> and and that's bad right the fact that. Uh, that this company is just eating film studios and eating like IPs and uh, fucking up uh, my copyright law forever. We will never have a see. I sincerely doubt I will ever see anything actually enter public domain in my lifetime. And I'm 36. I got years left in me. I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, the fact that they can do all of that uh, and not even genuinely like actually be that invested in the creation of art that is their brands because it's just their marketing. I don't give a fuck. That mm -hmm. genuinely frightens me, not only because it's super fucked up and they're just a horrible hell company and I see them every fucking day because I live in Florida, but because uh, they're, um, uh, 
their motivation is not even to make money off of art, which was what Warner Brothers and like Fox used to do. Uh, they just want to make money off of roller coasters, and I guess the movies are how they do that. So, yeah, totally soulless. That's that's it. That's I'm off my I'm, I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> Uh, you do yeah, kind of cut to one of the things that I do appreciate about Kingdom Hearts, which is that uh, conceptually, like as silly as it is, it is people making as as weird as it is. It's people like taking the being given the rare chance to take those pieces and do things that in many ways are uh, against the brand and like oh, yeah, no. that Disney Brown's doesn't over. like acknowledging and on some level feels ashamed of. No, no, it's a crossover. It's a classical crossover. It is a crossover in traditional sense, uh, or at least it was. Uh, nowadays, when they say crossover, they mean shit like Avengers movies. But that's literally all just shit Disney owns, and it's already like you know basically the same TV series, only they just put all the characters in that one. Uh, it was always it very amusing to me that like so the the original uh, the the original pitch. Uh, famously happened because Disney and Square were in the same office building in Tokyo because every major company is running from the same five office buildings. But Jesus uh, Christ! Yeah, there? yeah, that's how it started. <laughs> well, is everything okay? Hmm? Oh, I'm just doing something else, and I did really bad on rolls. Ah, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, I'm mean, glad that it's nothing serious. <laughs> As am I. But. Yeah, so uh, they, they showed the same elevator. Some executives start talking about, like, Disney doesn't really have a game foothold. Square would like another major franchise to bank on other than Final Fantasy. Uh, they start pushing around ideas of a Mickey RPG. Disney is way too precious about Mickey to let that actually happen. And so they end up with this bizarre set of rules. It's, it's almost... Uh, it's fascinating because, like, the set of rules is so ad hoc about what's allowed to happen and in what context. So, like, characters are not allowed to cross between movies, except Maleficent can sometimes wander around to Agrabah as long as the only other person there is Jafar. <laughs> yeah. It's it's fascinating because it's, it's a creation that they... The bizarre thing to level me... ...wanted, oh, sorry, go on. feared, and like we're not certain their level of actual control. One of the bizarre things to me uh, about re Kingdom Hearts is right when the first Kingdom Hearts game came out, there was this fucking show on the Disney Channel called House of Mouse that was literally yeah. that. It was just, uh, it was just, you know, old classic, uh, it was just like framing device for ancient Mickey um, uh, Mouse cartoons. But the framing but device was just like like Mickey sort of running characters this, or whatever the fuck. Was just sort of running this <laughs> nightclub where Disney characters just hung out. Or like, you know, talent show or stage or what the fuck ever you want to call it. Mm. Probably not a nightclub because that implies drinking and <laughs> no, that's not that's not gonna happen. But like, um, yeah, there was just like it was just the entire thing was just Jafar and Maleficent like in between like the cartoon bits, just like, you know, sitting at like a table in the back. Uh, sort of glaring at each other. That's sort of, like, shit. Uh, mm -hmm. And, like, as far as, like, you know, that sort of, like, little low-key thing goes, it was fine. When um, they did Kingdom Hearts, I was like, huh. I guess uh, I guess they're doing that thing I see on Disney Channel every now and then. Only, like, with some anime kid. <laughs> so it's weird for them to um, uh, backtrack on it so, so completely hard when they were already sort of doing it on their TV, Emma Blocks. Yeah, they they talked about all sorts of, like, uh, pre, pre Kingdom Hearts 1 release, they were remarkably able to talk about some of the things that they were pitched and not allowed to do. Uh, which is, of course, why Goofy is somehow the party's rear advantage of choices a shield. But... He wasn't yeah, allowed to wield an axe, as was originally the idea. I can't remember if they actually said what they had originally pitched for Goofy to wield. Did they say axe? I mean, axe, axe sounds like something Goofy would do. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would have I would have honestly guessed hammer. <laughs> now, hammer makes hammer makes more sense, especially because like Goofy's like whole thing in most of like his stuff is the American everyman uh, fucking up. Uh, fucking up his uh, two-bedroom, three-bath 
uh, house. <laughs> like, there are so many cartoons. Those are the best Goofy out. cartoons. They're just like, Goofy, the best Goofy completely cartoons. destroys the suburban home. Yeah, they're, like, there are so many of those where it's just Goofy um, uh, dealing with suburbia poorly. <laughs> the the George Geef cartoons that Disney also does not like talking about anymore. Very fascinating. It's like, here's a cartoon where Goofy cannot quit smoking. He has a cigarette in his mouth basically <laughs> every shot. But he can't show smoking anymore. Can't show smoking. Can't imply Goofy has ever smoked. Um, can't imply Walt well, Disney ever smoked, even though he was a habitual smoker and died of lung cancer. That's a and thing. Everyone at the time was a habitual smoker. Oh yeah, no. Like, like you could even hide behind the fact that obviously he smoked. Absolutely not uncommon. Obviously he smoked. Yeah, he I'm was just a, saying like they could. He was a uh, he was a wealthy he white know. man in the 1960s. Of course he fucking smoked. <sighs> Yeah, like, the decision to hide from history is the most Disney choice imaginable. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's one thing Disney oh, will absolutely do at every opportunity. It is, uh, pretends that they, um, had nothing to do with anything. But also everything to do with <laughs> everything. They celebrate their history and deny its existence in the same sentence with alarming consistency. <laughs> because it doesn't fit their brand. And speaking yeah, of which, exactly. Mags has... And Mags has a whole bunch of stuff in the chat, by the oh, way. Oh, hi, Mags. How you doing? Yeah, what is mostly that? about Owl House, which I thought was going strong, but I guess has been killed. Yep. Oh, really? Of course it has. That sucks. <laughs> Sorry to hear it. Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously, by the tone that I am striking, it's clear I have not seen it, but I've heard good things. It seems to be for people that are not me, but I'm sad that it's dead. I haven't either. Now hmm. Mags is saying all the cuss words, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Come on. Um, the Owl House not thing, their brand thing, I'm betting, I'm not happy to bet this, but I would, in fact, bet a lot of money, was it doesn't fit their brand because it's very gay. Well, That's I mean, definitely I, something that they were scared of. My yeah, guy by to China, because China's got a whole bunch of rules coming up. I mean, China's got a whole bunch uh, of rules, but the simple fact of the matter is those rules are... A pretext. Also, my understanding that difficult to circumvent in a lot of cases. My understanding is also that Owl House is a very teenage show, and a lot of these, like they go for something that is more kitty and toy centric, rather than something that is going to appeal. Like I understand. It strikes me as odd that they would say, "Oh, we don't want to do teenage shows when their biggest bread bread, bread money maker ever." is 100% aimed at teenagers, which is, of course, Marvel. Mm -hmm. Like, that thing has a bullseye on teenagers. Yeah, but you can sell toys of that to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, it's much easier to sell. There's, like, a Marvel... An Avengers movie is a giant toy set. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? I was trying to think what was Gravity Falls. Um, oh, I, rem yes. I remember watching that and thinking, yeah. "Hey, this is pretty good." But that it was also a wasn't super show. long. Like, um, like, yeah, like how many episodes? Fifty episodes. 20? I don't want to say fifty. I think it was much shorter than that. There's it, a couple seasons. It was like two, was two large seasons. seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Like usually, like the the animation tends to go for like fifty-two episodes as like kind of your minimum. Looks like 40, 40 episodes for this. Say so that's the reason why they <laughs> killed Korra on uh, Cartoon Network is because they can sell toys of that. Yeah, we well, go. Part because they don't try to sell toys of that because long, long ingrained hell. But yeah, buy all our playsets and toys. And upsell <laughs> the the one of those like eternal looping tautologies of marketing that uh, boys won't t buy toys of girls. Why? Now, how do you know? Well, they don't do it now. Well, you don't make any. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was based on a survey they did of, like, three children. Oh, like, man. What a Seriously? <laughs> yeah. You ever looked up the reason why the survey they did for how... Uh, I mean, I assume there was, like, some market research, but, like, it was three kids. <laughs> really? It was, like, a, it was like a really small amount. Uh, some tiny handful. Like, somehow, yeah. Like, it would be impossible for a, a sample size that small to be represented regardless of how it was laid out. Shit, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is I actually can... fucking hilarious. Let's see if I can find that. Mm. I remember hearing that, I was just like, yep, that explains so much. Yeah. Right, so. I mean, so much of, of like, 
business decisions end up justified by choice by essentially someone making a choice and then like essentially fabricating a market data to justify it to be oh, clear yeah. this isn't just a business thing i used to deal consistently with an old superintendent of schools and i can tell you so many decisions regarding schools are made by somebody who already had their mind made up and then decided to just you know oh, yeah. find yeah. somebody to agree with it like every, oh, obviously. my favorite st statistic is every report that they did independently indicated that teenagers work better later in the day. So theoretically, school should be starting at like 10 a.m. as opposed something. to something else. And guess what? Every time they had a non-independent study do, <laughs> and guess what? No, they came 7 a.m. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> totally. That's the best idea. It's like go figure. On a side note, I'm playing the misadventures of Tron Bond. <laughs> yeah, so you are. <laughs> very toy. Well, like I've got a Lego man, guys. Like, it is. It is very sad that I could purchase a set of Servants. I I I actually bought two different Tron Bond like stationary figures because they both came with a Servant. So I've got one oh, with man. the red head and one with the black head, but unfortunately that I only is... have two servbots. That's oh. actually, that's actually very adorable. I'm they, so glad you have your servbots, Gogglebot. They, they were so purchased very glad. at Suncoast Video. If anybody ever heard of that one, still. So. No, no, we went. Yes, we definitely I have. Went to Suncoast. Mm. Suncoast is one of those Suncoast things. Suncoast is like, where you bought your anime. We will never. Yeah, exactly. We will never be rid of. Hey, Beat, let's talk about Gungrave. <laughs> Fucking Gungrave. Great. How do you feel about that Gungrave gore uh, trailer? I haven't actually watched the trailer yet. I've been, uh, I've been kind of, uh, kind of like, uh, running do around. Do it like now, that. live, while we're on the air. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, you sent it to me, right? It's in my Discord? Yeah, it's, it's in your DMs. All right, sweet. That's the best way to get me to see something. Unless yeah, I usually when I want to make sure that you'll end up seeing it eventually, I just throw it in the DMs. Alright, let's, let's check this out. Okay. Those guys look extremely... The, um, uh, the bad thugs look extremely ridiculous. Like, they got Good. a dude with a pink mohawk. And that's excellent. The bad thugs. Basically a Fist of the North Star design. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, he's very Fist of North Star, which I would say fits the aesthetic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how primally <laughs> obvious it is that, like, the original Gungrave started as a Trigun game that, like, got ditched partway through. Yep. I was about to say, that that has always been a very... Uh, oh yeah, extremely obvious. Yes. Like, Sega announced a game called Trigun the Planet Gunsmoke, like, a year and a half before Gungrave came out. And that's the only reason they'd have had to be in contact with Yasuhiro Naito. <laughs> Uh, I see Graves, um, uh, I see Graves, um, a uh, tiny little girl caretaker is still around. <laughs> Some things never change. Some things never change. Like but yeah, I wasn't sure how I felt about, uh, this trailer until I saw that if you're just standing there, he starts dancing. And it's like, okay, <laughs> they have, they have yeah, no. on, huh? Yeah, no, that's, that's extremely gun grave. Oh, hey, Bungie's back. Somehow. Yeah, Bungie is a playable character now. Even though he's died twice? <laughs> but he's so cool, Beats. But he's very cool. Uh, I wonder if they'll bring back Rocket Billy Red Cadillac. I hope so. I would like Bungie I mean, like, and Rocket Billy. I mean, like, if I had to choose uh, between Gigi. Bungie and Rocket Billy, I would choose Rocket Billy every single time. <laughs> yeah, because he's Rocket Billy Red Cadillac. Yeah. No one has ever named a character better than Rocket Billy. Right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just enjoying hearing it over and over again. Gungrave gore. Fuck yeah, it looks great. I'm excited. Yeah, no, I was, I was very nervous about that until they finally showed some gameplay. It's like, nope, this is Gungrave. 
Yep. Like the second, the second I saw the gun grave, the second I saw him do the dance and like um uh, do the melee attack, wear the spikes on his um uh, coffin are now a chainsaw. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh yeah, no, that's gun grave. If I have any complaints, I would say that in a weird way it looks almost too detailed. And I can see what you mean. Like the original has like a very strange, like low detail, not quite cell shaded, but cartoony look that this is not trying to emulate, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, it looks like it looks. In, uh, the best way to put it is that it looks like a drawing, um, especially from the art, that somebody <laughs> like kept drawing forever. He never stopped drawing. They're very yeah. detailed drawings, but they are. I was actually playing the drawings. original Gungrave. On and PCS the original Gungrave is actually even is actually low poly even for a PS2 game. Yeah, it is a very... Uh, uh, it, I feel like it was pretty low budget, but it's like making the best possible use of its budget. I was yeah, like, no, it, it, was, it, was, it was extremely low budget, but like it's it um, uh, it carried that style. So my assumption for them uh, taking it into like, you know, current graphics would be just to let's take uh, these drawings that are insanely detailed and just make that into character models and cell shade them up. You know, whatever. Yeah, it really is a shame that cell shading is a whole kind of fell out of style. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, a lot of games do it. They just don't do it, like, in the way that we think of them as doing it. Like, um, yeah, for example, I mean, for example, Breath of the Wild is 100% cell shaded, um, but mm. people never really describe it as such because it's really just more like a, um, uh, it's more like more just like a painting look. Yeah, they're going for, like, a painty look. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but, um, I would uh, like for like the very like pronounced cell shading to make a return. Yeah, no, because that's just cool. Uh, it's good to want cool things. <laughs> but yeah, it, it looks like a good good, good gun grave, which it I was not like, expecting to see. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a gun grave game, and uh, there are exactly two gun grave games, and it looks like it could be the third gun grave game, and that makes me happy. I know there's the what? VR game. I don't have VR. The VR Nobody game's not good either. Uh, that's that's, that's why I was prepetitious about this. this. The new Gungrave, is it, was that a TGS announcement? Yeah, uh, well, they, we'd yeah. known it existed. It had been, like, confirmed to exist for a while. But this is the first time we've actually seen it. What other... Because I, I have not been paying attention. Very little happened to TGS. <laughs> it's been a rough year. Okay. Like, we got, we got another demo of... Uh, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. It's actually really good. It's a uh, and biscuit. No, no, that's the best part. That part's yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah, like when they told me that he was a biscuit, I was like, ah, so this game is made exactly for me. <laughs> I think Kishi like, described it as an angry white boy game. Uh, when Emma uh, Kinesi, I believe, was talking about how much she disliked it. And I was like, yes, that's why I like it. I am an angry white boy. That is my most sure. honest self. <laughs> for me, for me, it's, it, it does not... It feels self-aware without being overbearing. Like, I don't read it as happening, as everything is happening with the most face value intentional reading. But that's very much going to be in the eye of the beholder. Like, it is impossible for me to read the pacing and timing of the scene where he listens to a backstory, says bullshit, turns around, conspicuously pulls out his iPhone so that he can turn up his Limp Bizkit that only he can hear. Uh, but we can hear walks it away. Too. Yeah, we can hear it, but <laughs> the next scene immediately shows that he has, like, earbuds and no one else in this scene can hear it. But, like, it is impossible for me to read that, uh, that segment as anything other than they're having a laugh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that definitely seemed reasonable, considering, like, that. Like, I never knew if Dissidia was supposed to be serious. Because, like, if you, like, listen, this is a weird thing to say, but if you listen to the lyrics for the, like, the main theme, it goes on about, like, a marching band playing and stuff like that, and it's like... Are you guys for real, or what's happening here? <laughs> Which I feel is important to know when you're dealing with that kind of thing. The marching band, the marching band will play. Like, but in either case, it actually plays really well. But that's kind of the biggest thing to come out of TGS either way. Uh, video games will keep happening. Video games. Most everyone sort of played their cards for the rest of the year. 
Yeah. Max wants you to play a, a Digimon game or a Pokemon game. <laughs> Please do not play Digimon World. <laughs> I mean, there's really nothing stopping me from playing a Digimon game. I've got a few of them. Isn't Digimon the guy who, like, uh, the writer, the anime writer you're, you're, who went that's off the not, That's mm -hmm. not until, like, that's not related to the games. Yes, I know, but, but He like, was, like, the writer of, like, the third anime series. Yeah, also apparently uh, Serial Experience Lane and this Lane, one, Earth, they go. They go. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you want yeah, to me personally, have the guy who did Big O just go off a fucking bridge <laughs> into like crazy land. <laughs> that, 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 that wouldn't obsess me. So I, I like tragic you know. levels of Boomer Brain. Yeah. That's uh, uh, how, how I felt when, when Kanye went off the rails. Although Kanye going <laughs> off the rails was not too surprising. <laughs> No, yeah, Kanye no, like, went off the whale, rails in such a way that it, like, it took years to be certain how off the rails he'd gone, and then by that point, like, the sting had gone out. <laughs> yeah, like, we all got to see uh, Yeezy uh, lose his shit in slow motion, and it sucked, but we all, like, were able to at least see, ah, yes, now he is, now he is at the I am extremely rich fuck you portion of the um, <laughs> uh, life cycle. Oh, now we're into... Now where I'm uh, crossing over into the uh, next segment. Oh dear, this is going to be ugly. Uh, it was, it was tragic as these things tend to be. But there was, uh, there was a sense throughout the whole thing that uh, we could see what was coming in slow motion, and we're just trying sort of to like, mentally prepare yourself. We we're just sort of like, well, yeah, no, this this is unsurprising. Chiaki uh, Konaka just sort of like randomly. Yeah, Fucking Jackie Konaka just sort of randomly like put out a fucking Digimon, uh, a, a Digimon reunion script that was literally just the voice actors uncomfortably reading English phrases like in full culture. Yeah, and how it's destroying the world. It's, it was incredible, but also one of the worst things anyone's ever heard. I remember uh, I I I, t I tweeted something about it, and some guy, some idiot, tried to own me, which you should never uh. do. It tends to go poorly. <laughs> uh, I'm actually quite good at internet. <laughs> or at the very least, consistent enough <laughs> that I'm uh, uh, doctor internet. That, I, that, I, that I know what most people are doing. But um, uh, I was crunching chips, Mags. You don't got it. I was literally munching chips very loudly. <laughs> like the entire intro. All right, whatever. But like no, Vima, the thing that blew my mind is that he tried to say, "Oh, well, he's just trying to um, uh, keep Japan pure of Western decadence." Some, some, you know, obvious Nazi bullshit, right? Yeah. <laughs> but somehow uh, he didn't like put together that the West was where all this cancel culture shit came from. They didn't even <laughs> have a Japanese word for it. They were literally saying political correctness in <laughs> English. <laughs> <laughs> Truly incredible. Fucking amazing. But, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say about it? But no, my, my deep-seated uh, distaste for Digimon comes from having rented Digimon World once uh, on PS1, and it's one of the worst things I've ever played. <laughs> oh, I believe that's saying something. <laughs> uh, it's, it's absolutely a game that... Uh, is almost uh, hostile to its uh, to its target audience being able to understand it in any fashion. Because that <laughs> is a game where you'll like say what? I was just going to say, do you mean within like its own like systems, or just hostile as in like they just keep throwing terms at you that no human being could understand? Why would you assume it's one and not the other? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That is a, that is absolutely a game where it's unclear how the combat system works at first, because as it turns out, there is a very good chance that your starting Digimon will be too stupid to understand commands. That seems... So like, how does this combat system work? Uh, well, you might actually understand it. It's unclear because your Digimon is too dumb to understand what you're trying to tell it. <laughs> you know, on some, like, uh, basic, like, horrible, disgusting level, I am kind of impressed that they um uh, that they just went ahead with oh yeah no your Digimon is too dumb to follow your instructions <laughs> like that's a that's the sort of thing very few games do because it's such an obviously terrible idea so actually going for it got 
I can't not, like, I can't not tip my hat to that. <laughs> Meg says my first introduction to Digimon was the movie, and I still have trouble figuring out what the hell is happening in that movie. That's because it's three movies together. I was about together. to say, because it's a terrible movie that never was meant to be. It's yeah. Frankenstein. Although it had a killer sang- soundtrack. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, I there's think... so much ska in that. I, think I, think there's I like said a... a killer soundtrack. <laughs> I think yes, I know. I love Scott. Less than, I <laughs> think there's like three know. distinct uh, Less Than Jake slash Mighty Mighty Boss. I think there's an actual Mighty Mighty Boss Tone song. There's in there a Boss Tone song. There's a Less Than Jake song. That's beautiful. I love those bands. And yeah, they do play Smash Mouth right at the end. But when I showed that to someone, they thought I had doctored the files. Somehow <laughs> because it starts playing fucking All Star while like a kid is mourning his dead Digimon. That's how it goes. <laughs> Thank isn't you that, for like, watching one of the ways they can evolve, though? Like, like isn't no, that, like... no, this one's just actually been deleted. Oh. <laughs> isn't that just how they fucking evolve? deleted. No. <laughs> the, the thing that's really beautiful about actually playing Digimon World is that uh, you will also run into situations where your Digimon uh, needs to poop. And if it doesn't poop for a long enough time, it has, like, one of two things will happen. Uh, it will shit on the ground and. Uh, the game, it, it's impossible to remove the poop unless you create, evolve a Digimon into a poop-eating Digimon. Or, uh, sometimes it'll just die. I was about to say, it will die. It will fail to shit it. until it dies. I feel like... Doesn't it also become evil, potentially? It, it, hurt, it, it does hurt its morality in some fashion, as I recall. I mean, like, if, if you forced me to um, uh, poop on the floor and then uh, refused to ever clean it up, yeah, I, 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 I would probably become evil, too. <laughs> that, that's, that would be like, that, that's, that's a 100% I am going to become the Joker moment. <laughs> that entire thing just becomes more uncomfortable when you actually get good at the game and are able to, uh, like, and are able to evolve human looking Digimon because you'll get like these ones that are like, This one looks like an angel, it looks I was like about to a say, human you get, being. like essentially God, and it's like God needs to poop now. <laughs> yeah, like the thing is, to get a Digimon to like go to the bathroom appropriately, you have to take it to the bathroom and stand outside while it shits in the outhouse, and it's like really weird and uncomfortable <laughs> when your Digimon looks like and is theoretically supposed to be smart enough to be human like. That is actually super fucked up. Like, <laughs> like just goddamn. There's I me. Mean, it's, it's very <laughs> clear. It, it's a place that makes it the most clear that Digimon was originally a Tamagotchi spinoff, where it was determined that boys weren't buying enough Tamagotchis, so they need to make them fight. I mean, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were just talking about how, like, uh, it's kind of stupid and bullshit that, like, the entire, oh, boys don't buy this, so you have to make it more violent. But uh, I wasn't interested in Tamagotchis until I found one that I could make fight another one. Then I was like, oh, yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> I played regular-ass Tamagotchi, but fell out of interest of them because it meant that, like, I was constantly watching a pet die. Oh, yeah, that too. Like, super fucked up. <laughs> like, it just became, like, this is miserable, I don't want this anymore. It's like six. It's just like, no, this is unhappy. I don't like this. What are you doing right now, Bob? I'm what exactly is this creature? And there's a, I believe it's just like giant reaver bot. This looks like you're about to die. Don't worry, I can refill some health. Good for you. I don't know what I'm can supposed you know? to do against this thing. Uh, not this. <laughs> <laughs> not like this. Not like this! Dead. Take on right. Luckily, I've got a bazooka that has a very large area of effect. And every once in a while he just shoots me in the face and I'm like, I have to deal with that. Oh, there we go. Gorgle Borg. Gurgle Borg. Oh, he threw a couple of the servbots into his nose so he can't yeah. breathe. So he'll... 
I get you. That's exactly how it works. You throw the MSR pop up the nose, themselves. and then it's like, help, I can't breathe. It's very, um, uh, it seems, uh, it seems with complicated. What we call a relatable right. problem. Yeah. Who hasn't got a Lego man stuck up their nose? Come on. <laughs> everybody, everybody. No, if you, you say up. you have it, you're a liar. Violations. Oh my god, they're coming at me from every direction. Yeah, I might not survive. Get away from me. Did you deserve to survive? <laughs> Should have gone back for a health fill up before this. Was not prepared. See what you've done. What have you done? Was not prepared. What will you do? I guess I just lose. <sighs> What a misadventure for this <laughs> Tron. Poor Tron. Somebody used the special skill grenades. <laughs> Brain trading went up. Hey, you want to hear some fucked up shit? <laughs> Always. No, but sure. <laughs> so the... This this whole house thing. The yes, house thing that I'm involved in. <laughs> stressful enough that I have been using work as an escape. Oh God. no! <laughs> That's miserable. I'm so sorry. I'm so you know, fucking sorry. Let me go back to work where things make sense. <laughs> have you considered just you know talking to people instead? Have you considered? Well, good day and welcome to talking to people. <laughs> Shoot me a DM. I'll shout at you instead. Yeah, it's like, a, what is it? Like, I wake up in the morning and I feel, um, like, I immediately feel stress. And it doesn't completely go away until it's too late to uh, to do anything else. Like, uh, you know, like past business hours or whatever. Um, and Nothing I'm like, else can happen. They can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, so... Uh, what is it? Like, the, the I don't have a printer. I haven't needed a printer for years. Um, and most of the documents that I've had to sign have been, like, they'll sign this shit electronically or whatever, right? And, like, you know, there's this one document. It's like, yeah, we know you, you e-sign the rest of this shit, but this one, we need inked paper. Uh, so you need to print this out. Print this out, sign it, scan it, and send it back to us. Why? Oh, Lord. That is... Can't that's... Just... <laughs> that's almost impressive. I'm almost impressed by that. <laughs> like, I was almost tempted to try to use MS Paint to paint this. That it's would like, be no absolutely way. my choice. I mean, yeah, that's the way to do it. <laughs> So tomorrow morning, I'm going to have to drive my ass to a, uh, uh, well, they're not Kinko's anymore. FedEx took them over. So a FedEx Kinko Still replacement Kinko's. or whatever. Um, I, well, I think the ones over here, they're not named Kinko's. They are. But they're still Kinko's. Kinko's. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty much still Kinko's. FedEx Office Print and Ship Center. That's a fucking Kinko's. So if you send Tron Bond to uh, sleep, you can play in the casino. Rockstar finally, <laughs> finally removed the agent from its website. What? The what now? Do you remember what the agent was? No, no, I don't. I, I, I don't know. I haven't. My, my video game history foo is very poor. <laughs> well, the agent never came out, so it kind of doesn't count as history, but. The, the, the thing is, like, The Agent was a game that Rockstar was, I think, probably pressured into announcing before they would have wanted to uh, back in 2006 by Sony, who was desperate to have exclusives lined up for the PlayStation 3. Uh, so the Agent sounds... was announced. Uh, sounds not reasonable, but believable. That's, that's, that's absolutely in line with what I know about Sony. Yeah. Uh... 
Maybe it was like 2007, right? But, but the point is, like, it was it was one of those things where it was like, we want to pretend that we have more things coming down the pipe. So please announce this. It was never elaborated upon other than to claim that it existed at some point. Uh, some handful of, like, concept art has appeared on people's LinkedIn profiles over the past decade and a half. Uh, but they finally just removed it from their website so that people would stop asking. <laughs> Okay. I mean, it's like, no, it makes sense, but, like, at the same time, I don't know, you kind of expect more. <laughs> it's just very funny to me. I expect just like, more. This is, this is what happens, because, like, a lot of games get cancelled long before you've heard about them. And this probably would have been knowledge to no one, and just never acknowledged if it had been any other circumstance. Yeah. Like, it would have been just one of those cases where, yeah... We announced some shit. We announce shit all the time. What <laughs> do you want from me? do you take me for a fool? How many days do you think? So we're headed for the end game here because that's all that's left. <laughs> You're free. <laughs> and we're going up against the random casino owner or whatever who has everything. Or whatever, he's kidnapped our entire family. How dare you say that to me? Me? Thinking about how I got confused the other week because uh, several British, um, I think it was, was it, was it British specifically or was it just European? Uh, ratings boards uh, changed, like, retroactively changed the ratings of several um, uh, Nintendo games because they had simulated gambling in them. Oh, yes, yeah, so I heard Yeah, there's a reason that the game corner went away a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, Pokemon. Pokemon's gotta stay safe. Yeah, which is, it's hilarious that they bothered to do that because, like, you know, gotcha still exist. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's what's, that's what, um, uh, threw me off about it and ultimately pissed me off about it. Simulated because, gambling is wrong, but real because, gambling um, uh, is Because they're not like, <laughs> they're not like, uh, they're not like tearing down instances of, like, you know, actual gambling. They're tearing down instances of the aesthetics of gambling, which is to say dealers wearing uh, wearing ties and vests and uh, and like roulette tables with red and black dots. <laughs> they aren't getting rid of the gambling. They're getting rid of the casino look. So like, but there are games where gambling is a huge portion of it. Uh, and just it's like a constant thing. And they are very much directed at children and they are very much trying to um, uh, create um, uh, to, to create gambling habits. Uh, but, but they're a-okay because they don't look like gambling or at least not like traditional gambling within a casino. <laughs> Pisses me off. I was actually at, a, at a uh, boardwalk pier over the weekend with a, I'll call him my nephew, who's 14, and it was like, like there were like one Mario Kart game, one Injustice game, and like everything else was those games where you drop quarters in and maybe they make the other quarters fall down. Oh, the coin games. Yeah, and he literally looks at me and says, like, aren't kids not allowed to gamble? And I'm like, yeah, but somehow this is a fuzzy area. <laughs> it's like, that's what the arcade is now. They're just trying to fleece you, but I guess this is allowed. I'll get out of it by myself. Now put in some quarters, and maybe quarters will fall down. <laughs> yeah, I didn't play those as a kid because they seem to never work. Well, I don't think there's any way that it's bad. No one has ever Nobody won ever. one of those things, yeah. Nobody ever wins those things. They are impossible to win. They're designed not to work. They work, yeah. you get money. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Why can't they shut up already? As yeah. stated, the entire goal is to um, uh, separate you from your money. <laughs> But I was glad that he immediately identified, like, hey, isn't this whole thing a scam? It's like, yes, yes, it is. Well, <laughs> he seems, he seems like he's got a good head on the show. Let's go play Let's Mario Kart. <laughs> oh, man, arcade GP, baby. Exactly. To be honest, you just be happy there's an arcade at all. <laughs> 
Bring back the period when we would just put an arcade cabinet in space you didn't like, fill with something in it. Oh yeah, no, I, I miss like local diners just having random like Ms. Pac-Man machines just for no reason. <laughs> uh, bring back the Raiden cabinet that only shows up in the laundry room. <laughs> Hey, Bukayatsu, where are you? I want to say the local, and yes, this is an actual thing, the local roller rink still has a Simpsons you machine, do? which I appreciate. How horribly wow. burned in is it? Not that bad, actually. It's it's fairly well maintained, I, I would say. I'm not Impressive. Brother. There's that and I always think about machines. I always think about whenever you would find, like, a, an X-Men machine that has, like, one of the, like... It's, it's the six-player kind, but, like, one of the two monitors is completely... It's way more fucked than the other one. Yes, no, that is definitely a thing. That's the thing. No, I haven't. What's it about? That the burn. Oh, so anyway, Tron and Tiesel have both been thrown in jail. Not good for them. And that's the end of the Mega Man series. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is the start. They're not on the moon yet. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe they're trapped in prison on the moon. <laughs> Basically. Don't get there. Don't get there. It is wonderful to me that uh, that Tron um, uh, going to jail is considered, you know, just the end. <laughs> I mean, like, if this were a modern game, like, clearly this would, like, be the bad end because you forgot to finish one of the missions or something. Yeah. It's not a true end. Try again with your friends. He did, did not collect all the doodads. <laughs> So remind me, Mega Man's trapped on the moon with Roll, Tron, and Roll's mom? I don't think that's accurate. I think no, Roll and no. Tron are still on Earth. Tron and Roll are definitely... Well, we'll get to Mega Man Legends 2 starting probably next week. Okay. But, but if oh, memory serves, the finale is that... Mega Man is on the moon and everybody else is trying to reach him. Yep, I was. Yeah, I think that was supposed to be the premise of the prototype demo of Mega Man Legends 3 that never actually went out, was that, like, uh, they were, like, raising money for rocket parts, basically. Yeah, it costs a lot of money to go to the moon, as we are yeah, all like, aware you know, <laughs> yeah. It is not cheap to go to the moon. Okay, I'm thinking of something else, I guess, but... Hmm. I understand. I will say that uh, Mega Man is stuck on the moon with Roll, Tron, and uh, Roll's mom. Sounds like a Dojin setup. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it kinda is. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> we all been on the internet a while. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need to be on the internet again. Just go to Suncoast Video. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Wait, they sold those at Suncoast? <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> I guess those were like, um, I guess those were like um, in the back. Yeah, the back room. <laughs> yeah, the very back. <laughs> hey, this part actually isn't subtitled. How annoying. I, apropos of nothing, I suddenly have annoying fucking songs stuck in my head. That's wonderful. Is it Dynamite, du like, Duck You or whatever? No, no, it's, um, it's this old, uh, Scrub Club, uh, joint. Uh, um, Mad Hatter, who is a personal friend. Uh, that's just the Bubble Bobble theme. Uh, him oh, singing. Oh, damn, this is an annoying oh, fucking song. You look at it, it's stuck it, inside your head and it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like <laughs> just that repeated forever. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a thing of pure beauty. None of you may say anything disparaging about annoying fucking hot song. The annoying fucking song is a work of art. <laughs> you were stuck in the basement all day. So, a one single serve bot is going to be sent out, well, with other serve bots, to rescue Tron. But the point is that Tron is not around, so the serve bots have to do it themselves. Oh, no. That's, uh, that's a bummer. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 
Oh no. Hold on, my wife just got home. We've got server bots ready to go. Let's go, server bots. It's the misadventures of Tronbon. Oh, well, guess what? The server bot piloting the device is no different than when Tron is. Let's talk so we don't randomly overhear me. <laughs> uh, Hello! <laughs> How's how everybody doing? Oh yeah, so you want to see something that's like neat that I realized about today's Smash Brothers? Sure. Okay, so can you name all of the Smash Brother DLC characters? Let's see, Piranha Plant, Joker. One, two. Uh, do you want these in order? Or? No, it doesn't have to be in order, but we're going to count them. Uh, Piranha Plant, Joker. Uh, <laughs> the Harry Violet. Uh, Min Min Sephiroth. Uh, Banjo Hero, uh, did you get Pyro and Mithra? Oh, Pyro and Mithra. Trying to name the um, uh, DLC characters from memory? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to like, I think we just hit 10. And like Sora is 11, is there more? Or am I, do I get all of them? Well, here, here's the fun thing if you're paying attention. If you get all of them, and you count Pyra and Mithra as two characters... Then Sora's S number 13. Sora's number 13! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> the significance of that. <laughs> is it relevant at all? <laughs> Organization 13 is the King of Hearts, then. <laughs> That's the significance. That's all the significance there is. It's uh, funny. Apparently. Disappointed to hear that the King of Hearts uh, parts of the Switch are all five versions and would like to actually properly play Portable King of Hearts. Sorry. Mm. Uh, yeah, what's up with the cloud thing? That, like, what other Switch games are cloud based? Uh, Control, Dying Light 2, Hitman 3. Generally, things that have no business being on Switch for the most part. That's why my initial assumption was that, like, Kingdom Hearts 1 and a half, 2 and a half would be actual, like, card games, and the others might be cloud games, but... Oh, wait, wait, are we actually putting Kingdom Hearts on the Switch now that, like... Yep. Uh, well, they're right. putting them on as, like, games you can play through the cloud. Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. It's a choice. Why? Uh, in Japan, there was also Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Resident Evil 7 as cloud games. But yeah, I, I would imagine that the answer is that Square's kind of spread itself too thin to actually port them internally. Uh, given that they have things like FF7 Remake and Dragon Quest and like fi five Dragon Quests, like uh, <laughs> FF16, FF14 upkeep, like all of those together are probably have probably stretched their internal seems too thin to make a specific port, but if you just play it through the cloud, then you aren't doing so much of a porting job. Wait, um, that, I, I, I'm not following the logic or the... Because even if you're playing it through the cloud, you're still playing it on your Switch, right? Unless you're doing some Stadia bullshit. The, sw the Switch is not doing any sort of processing other than to, like, stream it. send input back and forth to the stream that you're getting. Like, this Wait, is quote unquote Stadia? What? It kinda is? Oh god. Yeah. They, they, they have made it work, like, the, this does exist, there are other games that use this. I played a bit of, a, like, a, the demo of Control on Switch, and it honestly works reasonably well, but, like, it means that I can't play it portably, which is kind of the way, the, the, on, the reason I would want these on Switch. Yeah, I know, that. that's my big problem, is that the portable thing is the number one reason I would get a Switch Kingdom Hearts as it is, it's like, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, a... it's more frustrating to me because it precludes the idea of supporting like one and a half and two and a half to Switch. There's a choice. Uh, 
surprised they wouldn't just like you know farm it out to like some boarding companies. There are plenty of those. I'm sure that if they had 100% rights to it, they. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because. D- yeah. Disney's been very weird about what the has has done some weird things uh, relating to what they're allowed to do with Kingdom Hearts in the past. And it would as always, me they're Disney. Dragging a third uh, company in. Would Disney's. Make it uh, Disney's entire thing has always been uh, weird and controlling and um, uh, <laughs> evil. No, evil. That's not the only word for it. They're, they're yeah, evil. Okay. But yeah, so uh, they apparently they just sort of uh, coincide with this talk about like their preparations for a proper looking March 20th anniversary event. So. Guess that'll be happening sometime next year. <laughs> I mean, didn't like the first one come out in 2001? Aren't we already there? 2002. Oh, okay. The We're big off. 2001 game was FF10. The big 2002 <laughs> game was Game of Hearts. Right, okay. Cool. Yeah. Also coming out at nearly exactly the same time was a Italian, uh, a, a uh, Donald Duck game uh, based on an Italian comic book where he's a superhero. <laughs> Fun. Just the sum of that era for Disney. Yeah. Uh, Disney's out of, the, out, out of the Shadows. Public Bite and Pizza. So Apparently for anybody... the official name that they gave this character when they tried translating Italian comics into English was the Duck Avenger. Cute. Alright. <laughs> Or are you gonna say Gaga Bond? Oh, I was just gonna say for anyone paying attention, we have now rescued the Bonds, so now it is officially Tron Bond piloting the ship. But of course, like gameplay-wise, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Wait, who was piloting the ship before? The Servbot. Hmm. Number twenty-two, who I chose as my favorite because he had the best. <laughs> I was number twenty-two. Your ah, oh, okay. Yeah, be- because he was pretty strong. I can't believe you would rate your children like this. <laughs> All you have to do is rate your children. 90% of this game is rating your children. <laughs> oh, uh... Also, apparently, Mag Ma- Ma- Yeah, I was gonna say. Go ahead. What's this? Oh, it's just, uh, Mags was saying, oh yeah, go go, I made a VTuber based off the profile picture, I'll find the paper I drew. And oh, there we go. Later. There you go. Now we're getting somewhere. You're on my... Uh, your your net your my your life as a VTuber begins now, Gogglebot. <laughs> I am going to get I'm going to get my rig going. <laughs> Finally, how you're expensive. A... How expensive is a rig? Anyway? Renounce flesh, become VTuber. <laughs> I mean, that's probably going to have a lot to do with uh, who you're having doing the rigging. <laughs> Finally, you're a real fake boy. Thinking <laughs> about aren't all VTubers girls? I could be a fake girl. <laughs> there are plenty of fake. There are plenty of fake boy VTubers. Oh, okay. The only one I'm aware of is Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> there's also Bob from Bob and Bob and Mr. Hart from Fist of the North Star, but there's also just a bunch of like independent ones and like even the the major like quote unquote VTuber agencies have them. I mean, like technically, I I am only doing this to get fan art of my own VTuber, so like you know, obviously I need to do whatever's going to maximize that. <laughs> But yeah, That's like even <laughs> that engagement. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, big brother. Let me handle this. Let's go. Hey, Tron. But yeah, there's there's been a handful of like random corporate YouTubers, but then it's just funny. But funny of uh, every kind of horrible thing you can imagine has been the yep. stars. So. <laughs> Well, that's that's an excellent endorsement or something. The um, uh, Grim Abyss that is VTubers uh, started, I believe, as a way to make, uh, if I want to say, Hololive strikes me as an idol company, uh, which is to say abusive as shit and also very openly evil. Um, <laughs> but where their deal is that um, uh, the idols won't age out or get boyfriends or quit <laughs> because... You could just get someone else to use the voice changer. <laughs> I was about to say, or just be like, you know, just a random guy in his basement. <laughs> yeah. For as much as Hololive is a horrible evil company, they never actually tried that. That was actually something they that another company did try with one of the first of these to break out called Kizuna Eye. They tried to replace her, and 
people immediately noticed, and it became a big boondoggle. I thought, like, I thought, like, one of the more popular VTubers, uh, was just some dude. And, like, at one point, they were like, his chat was like, hey, are you just some dude? And he was like, yeah. And then he just turned <laughs> I mean, that has happened anger. for a number of VTubers, yeah. <laughs> But people do tend to notice when they get replaced, which is why companies don't really try to do it anymore. Yeah, I mean, like, you know. <laughs> I like the idea There's, like, that certain things that are good about it because it allows no. people to have at least some degree of, uh, like, privacy when streaming, when, at, like, making their bones as a streamer. I mean, yeah. that, that is kind of impressive because, like, legitimately, like... The idea of having a day job and also having really in-depth conversations about Kingdom Hearts does sound something like, you know, mutually exclusive. <laughs> Looks like, like uh, the thing about, like, video game streaming, like, like professional streaming, is it's a full-time job. That is, yeah. that is your livelihood, and you are going mm -hmm. to have to treat it like a job. I remember... Uh, Seeing uh, Dark Viper AU, uh, GTA 5 speedrunner, who also basically is a full time streamer, uh, talking about it. He said, Yeah, no, it's a job. But, you know, I get to play a video game I like a lot, so that's kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> if you're lucky. That's, that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Sometimes you're a VTuber. Oh, okay. I the algorithm with the latest, greatest new thing, like whatever the hell it is that Amazon's doing. <laughs> uh, that's always yeah. a scary statement. There are many like VTuber agencies of varying degrees of evil. Uh, <laughs> and but then of course there are a bunch of people that just like scream right. independently behind an avatar because it like I think it's fun. People <laughs> click on those more often, it's more fun. Mil million possible reasons. Yeah, yeah. There's loads of reasons to pronounce flesh become VTuber. <laughs> <clears throat> Very trans friendly. Very true. There you go, yeah. But yeah, it, it kind of uh, helps take out the equation that the expected face cam is a problem because people are immediately like focusing on your face and being caustic and horrible to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. They'll still be caustic and horrible, but they'll have uh, oh, yeah, slightly yeah. less personally identifiable. I was about Stream to say, though, fucking insane. Like, to <laughs> yeah, it's kind of insane to how we've absolutely learned that given enough people, that they will hate literally one. anything that exists. Like, that, mm -hmm. that has to be some kind of a law. But... Also, As somebody who legitimately and and is uh, sincerely hates virtually everything, I think, yeah, no, I agree. Makes sense. <laughs> also, congratulations to the Misadventures of Tron Bod of doing the great anime trope of, oh, wow, that was insane. It's a wonder we survived. I don't even know how we did it. And it's just like a cut to black. <laughs> What a misadventure this was. That's been, like, that's been like a thing for as long as like storytelling's been a thing, I think. Okay, true Just... enough. Listen, falling action's hard. <laughs> but yeah, uh, congratulations to Trombo. Mm -hmm. But nothing. Yeah, Goggle Bob, you don't get no congratulations. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, we're, not, we're not out of the woods yet. There's still a giant colossus we have to deal with. I said congratulations to Trombon, but not to Goggle Bob. Same. Yes. Goggle Bob all walking around acting like he deserves congratulations. I don't, know, I don't think so. Not have it. I mean, I am pretty awesome. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Well, that sounded so insincere coming from yourself. Yeah, I mean, seriously. <laughs> like, I'm not even I'm not even saying it's wrong. I'm saying it sounded insincere. <laughs> like, like I like to think when I say stuff, like, of course, I, I, of course I mean that. I'm fucking awesome. I at least, like, sound like I believe it on some level. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's happening to... She, uh... She pass out? Is it time for the serve bot to rise again? <laughs> Possibly. Is it time for the Sir Bots to rise again? 
I will say it's uh, they very, before? It's very yeah, they were impressive. They were rescuing how, uh, them. It's very impressive how like every single one of the how the surf bots have such expressive little faces, and all of them are oh god, oh god, oh fuck, oh god. <laughs> every single one of them is constantly going through some sort of existential crisis. <laughs> yeah, like they are. They they have they have one setting, and that is oh Jesus, oh fuck, everything's going to hell, and it's all my fault. <laughs> They are made uh, to suffer, and they are extremely good at it. <laughs> suffer for you. <laughs> suffer like you did. So, Bob, why does that one have a red dot on the head? Because that one is my favorite. Ah. Uh... Did they ever like confirm which one showed up? If if they are to be treated as a, as individuals, did they ever tell five tell them uh, to define which one was the guy in Marvel vs. Capcom two? Um, <laughs> no, technically, but it would be like canon wise, it is whichever one is your favorite. I would say. All right, cool. So in my case, it's no like number twenty two. <laughs> Oh, it wouldn't be number. Oh, it's the one that shows up random, just out of nowhere. 42? 41? 40, 41? 40, 41 is the one that, like, nobody understands where he came from. Ah, uh, that's And musically that. enough, that one you cannot make a favorite. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, Skyward Sword HD is on sale. I need to pick that up. That's a good one. Okay, uh, I need to beat that one. Bad. I started playing it, and then I got distracted by No More Heroes. Uh, oh, yeah, that works. It's really a much more beat game than Skyward Sword HD. That's fair. Uh, you think are more beat than No More Heroes? Yeah. <clears throat> Bob, you seem to be doing kind of... Poorly? I mean, like, it, it, it's something... I'm trying to figure out exactly how you're supposed to do this because it says that the serve bots are supposed to pull out the thing. I guess we get the cutscene. Oh no, it's just the fall in. <laughs> Thank God we just start from the beginning of this. Otherwise, I would have to give up the stream entirely. <laughs> now, this is before they designed like 3D action games with decent cameras, so it's a little bit different than Dodge. Use the serve bots to get the ones on its head. Oh wait, do they mean like it's head head? Let me try that. Ah, I see what's going on. I was aiming at the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I have San Francisco stuck in my head. It's not even a song I like that much, but it's stupid catchy. It makes me mad. I'm angry that it's stuck in my head. I'm going to fail, but I'm trying to see if this works. Yes, okay, that's how that works. Very good. This time, I'll this get fun. it. This is a fun tweet. Wow, he just ripped right through you. Yeah, no, if you stand still, you're dead. I was aiming at the wrong things. It happens. Oh, I can just hit start. This works that well. Okay, so I can theoretically use the other things as, like, cover, and then we'll be good. Nope, cover doesn't work. Wait, no, it's. So, uh, there's a tweet that I'm not being, that I just posted in the general chat. Uh, it's reminding me of one of the most, like, fucking bizarre things I ever saw take place on the big huge board. Which was, uh, people logging their attempts to reach level 99 in Hudson before leaving the Destiny Island tutorial area. Oh my god. Okay, uh, I, I've read okay. about how to do that, and it's sad. Yeah. Just what were you going to say, Pete? Well, not having the ability to see health bars. But now I realize that's understandable that Riku is having a meltdown the whole game. <laughs> just... Yeah, no, suddenly it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the game keeps... The game has sort of keeping track of who's won their competitions. And what. It can get yeah, very like, silly after a while. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry, there's there's a fine line between uh, celebrating your success and just being an asshole. <laughs> You're crossing it, buddy. You're crossing it. <laughs> That's how 12-year-olds are, then. That is true. That is, that is probably the most uh, 
the most emotionally honest thing in all of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I gotta say something about it though. Uh, but yeah, like this 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 thread that went on for months of people just talking about their progress and trying to reach level one Destiny Islands. Is that like how? Uh, is that like how there was like a thing for a while about um? Uh, Ah, uh, fuck, where's, where's my head at? It's gone. It's just fucking gone. Where is my mind? Um... Yeah, no, no, it's not coming back. Life's unfair. <laughs> but, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's all the return to me. Okay, um... The, um, uh, let's... Get him, uh, get Cloud and Barrett to 99 before the first boss in Final Fantasy VII Challenge. Uh, yeah, similar. Uh, took, like, not sure. uh, took like seven months in real time, but the guy just like, you know, streamed it every evening and just basically used it as his hangout time. <laughs> Watch his TV. Yeah, uh, there, there's ways to optimize in Kingdom Hearts that you can't do in FF7, but it's basically the same principle. Yeah, alright. Uh... Specifically, like, Kingdom Hearts had, like, a mechanic where you could gain EXP and hit metal by doing things like deflecting enemy attacks. And, like, that was the fastest way to do it in Kingdom Hearts 1. You fought Titus and repeatedly, like, deflected his, like, fucking stick attacks. Oh, did that, like, give you an XP bonus or something? Yeah, you got, uh, the game called them technical points, but what they were were they were EXP that was awarded to you in mid-battle. Huh. Neat. Seems like you'd have to be there for fucking ever to like make any sort of actual progress, though. Oh yeah, absolutely. This was not a fast process. It was just faster than repeatedly beating the enemies because, like, you could fight like the two FF10 kids and the FF8 kid and Riku, and none of them was worth more than like five EXP. So getting two in mid battle was way was like way faster because it was like that was an attack you used a lot and you could get very good at getting EXP from us. <laughs> Alright, cool. I guess that makes a certain amount of sense. I yeah, suppose. But it was still, yeah. You know, it's still like you know, still like a video game masochism of the highest degree. <laughs> oh yeah, these were people who had run out of things to do. Let me see if I can figure I love, out how much uh, I love stupid video game challenge runs. That's a thing for me. Yeah. But like, you know, I love them in the format where they are um, uh, chopped up and edited into a digestible YouTube video. Yeah, you know, like actually watching someone. Actually watching that in real time? No, no thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to work out how much EXP you actually need to reach level 99 in Kingdom Hearts 1. A lot. So give us... Oh All yeah, then I... Oh, Bob is using the cheese way. <laughs> I'm like, I can do this. Go and cheat, I'm gonna cheat. Is there a table? There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So to get to uh, the max level in Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, the bare minimum amount you can you can need, and this is dependent upon how you answer certain questions at the beginning of the game. Uh, is 878,290 XP. That's a lot. That's a very large number. Yeah, and these people were doing this over the course of months by, like, exploiting something that was, like, very charitably got them, like, you know, 10 or 15 EXP inside of a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's... That's a um, uh, that's a line I do not want to. That's something I am Max. not happy to see. Oh, have a good night, Max. Sleep well. Good night. I'm not oh, sure that yeah. is someone who's still playing Cookie Clicker. That's <laughs> why. Well, that's a, that's a, that's something that you do, I guess, in your spare time. That's like the state hey, of Well, I was gonna say that's me just checking out it like maybe a couple times a day. Yeah, yeah, like that's a, <laughs> this is something you have to be actively engaged in. Which yeah, makes like, like the entire point of idle games is that they just sort of play themselves, and you check on it every half hour or so, and you're like, ah, it did the thing. That's nice. 
It appears we've lost Mr. Uh, that said, I am, I am very much allergic to idle games. Not, I'm not allowed to touch this. Even if it uses. But not really for me, but that's fine. Energy. We should still deal with them. We will at least break. There's like there are like certain things I just know I have to avoid if I want to be a functional human being. Idle games are on the list. <laughs> H1 had this extremely strange mechanic where the game would ask you at the start of the day, start of the game, it would give you like a questionnaire about like your personality, and it would use that to determine uh, what pace you would level at throughout the game. Yeah, and it was extremely... weird because like certain... like it doesn't explain what it's doing. It's just I was gonna like, say, it's those... certain things were straightforward about it, like you know. You pick sword or shield or staff, like that makes sense. Yeah, that has nothing to do with your EXP curve. Like the bit where it's asking you, uh, like, what what are you so afraid of? What do you want out of life? What's most important to you? Is actually determining what your EXP curve is throughout the game. Now that's that feels that feels wrong. <laughs> I don't like that. The game makes it relatively clear what happened, like what it's doing, although it's saying it obliquely. Like, uh, yeah, relatively clear is the right way to phrase this. Yeah, like if you have any capacity to understand that before, then it makes sense what it's saying. But uh, yeah, I don't. Who can do that? Basically, like the results are parsed out to you as like your journey begins at dawn, midday, or dusk. If you uh, if your journey begins at dusk, then the early levels take more EXP, but the later levels take less. At midday, it's a consistent curve, and at dawn, it's the uh, early levels take less EXP, but the later levels take more. It doesn't honestly change that much for most of the game. It's just like, if you want to actually reach level 99, your journey begins at dusk is easier. <laughs> I mean, okay, I guess. Uh, I, to the tune of about 100,000. Damn it. <laughs> Bearing in mind that the like vast majority of the XP you need is in the last 20 levels. And it would be deeply silly to claim that you could not beat the game at level 80. Mission. Video games are weird. Video games are weird. Video games are strange, and nobody likes them. <laughs> oh, oh, here I like video games. <laughs> All the way back here? I know! It keeps happening. And also, for the record, like, this whole... Like, there's a level of pylons where they don't really, like, attack you that much that you just have to go through is kind of BS. We require additional pylons. <laughs> Like, I guess they wanted to pad out this fight a little bit, but, like, they padded it out too much. Yeah, sounds about right for this era of gaming. I mean, it's like, it's the final boss. Like I said, if this was, like, a later era game, the final boss would be easier, but you would have gotten a bad ending if you didn't do absolutely everything in the game. Like, it's one of those kind of things. Uh, you just learned to live with it. Trying to think, but I'm bad at it. Just incredibly bad at it. So it's not happening. Hey, only VTuber. <laughs> no thoughts, VTuber. <laughs> Dehumanize yourself and face the VTuber. Dehumanize yourself and face to watch is an upsetting reverse tire phrase. <laughs> you gonna do this? I'm gonna cheese you. Our bots are having such a good time. <laughs> they kind of are, and it's vaguely. They don't like things and break them. I'm now imagining which surf bot likes listening to the song Break Shit. <laughs> All of them. Yeah, no, they're, they're good at it. it All they me. want in life. <laughs> no, they aren't. Are you saying that because you don't think they're good at breaking shit, or are you saying that because you don't think they're good at anything? <laughs> <laughs> Not good at anything. 
Okay. See, that, I'm, uh, that tracks. I love that this thing has more health than there is on the screen. Gives you a good idea of what's happening. It's like when you find out the boss has five health bars, and it's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my reaction to the bunch of final fights. Five health bars? Fuck you. <laughs> What color even is this health bar? Once you get down to the huge health bar, your strategy changes. Which is true in this fight. <laughs> he mostly just shoots fireballs, but then when you get a little higher, he does more. Can you take me higher? See, if all the serve bots attack at once, you actually really eat through a tell. Yeah. They're more powerful than you would have mentioned. They are. There we go. Yeah, that sounds good. Just stand my ground and throw bombs. Words to live by. <laughs> Yay. And Tron's like, you did it. <laughs> I like Congratulations. That even the Everybody's idea. Very proud of you. I like that there's even the idea that Tron Bon could have died in the prequel to the game where she first appears. <laughs> like, oh, I was tricked. It turns out she's okay. They oh, goodness, is it... What's happening? I was gonna say, oh goodness, is Anakin gonna survive this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they really should have introduced a fourth Bond that doesn't appear in Mega Man Legends 1 and the whole time you'd be like, what is going to happen? <laughs> I like that the one little bird robot now has its wig in a cast. Feels needlessly mean. <laughs> Those bird robots are jerks. But also very funny. Nobody so, likes know, it. Whatever. Things are exploding. This is the big grand finale with servbots flying away and Riding the Getzel Zaft and punching giant heads. It's awesome. And the next time you see that tank, Mega Man Legends is fighting it. Uh, I love Mega my good friend Mega Man Legends. <laughs> uh, yes. Mega Man Dash. Favorite character, yeah. favorite character of all of everybody, Mr. Mega Man Legends. <laughs> Dig out his adventure stories in the house a lot, dude. And the bad guys are left to drown. <laughs> I'll drown you. Wait, no, I won't. <laughs> will not drown you. Fanboy, you will no drowning Goggle Bob. We discussed this there. at length. <laughs> it's bad to drown Goggle Bob. On Asian tablets. Oh, this may be of relevance to people here. Uh, starting October 27th, PS3 and Vita PS on stars on these credit cards, debit cards, or PayPal. Wait, we want to get that? those through. Uh, starting October 27th, PSN, PS3 and PS Vita PS on stores on all these credit, debit cards, or PayPal's. So yeah, how PayPal. would you be able to purchase anything? Uh, you can still make purchases by purchasing a PSN gift card. That works so, PS4. so basically, yeah. the um, only way to um, uh, so basically the only way to buy from them in the near future is to um, uh, or like to buy from them if you if you feel like you're going to want to buy multiple things is to just buy all the points right now. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like they they're clearly like teeing up to shut it down properly. Yeah, they wanted to a little while ago, but all, everybody said no, please don't. They were like, oh, okay. And there's probably Sorry. some kind of additional tax. we're still tax. teeing up to shut it down again. Some yeah. kind of additional pack, tax they have to pay to actually, like, process money on the thing. But if it's all points-based, then they can just kind of, like, you know, peter out. Mm -hmm. Apparently, like, if your account has money from, like, other services, like, it'll still work there. So you can still get around that if you need to. Interesting. No, not the other world. But yeah, it's one of those things where it's, like, they're clearly teeing up to shut down that particular store. Get on the ball, though. 
I mean, how long has the PS3 been around, technically? 15 years. Wow. Long enough. <laughs> and this yeah, so they're, they're what are they shutting down exactly? I, I was... They are they are removing the capacity to directly add money to the uh, PS3 and PS Vita, like, PSN stores. Mm. No, my Vita... I don't even know where it is. It means life. <laughs> yeah, mine's sitting right here. You can play, I don't know uh, where my, where my Vita or my Vita games. Incredible. Some really bad... Uh, spin-offs of 2010 era first-person shooters. Or Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified. Instantly, for those of you who care about the plot, Tron picked up the bad guys and dropped them off for the police officer that she's been menacing all game, so that way the police officer gets the arrest of the bad guys. Hooray! Oh, the police officer doesn't get arrested. <laughs> so she can do some of that good old fashioned police corruption. Hooray! <laughs> I do love good old fashioned anime police corruption. Also, like, maybe the only black woman in the entire Mega Man franchise here? Uh, I no, think the, there, are a uh, there are a few in Battle Network, come to think of it. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of them in Battle Network. Uh, bring that part in Mega Man Battle Network 2, where you go to, like, a foreign land and immediately get robbed. <laughs> and the foreign <laughs> land is clearly not supposed to be America. <laughs> That'd be silly. Like you helped your friend out pretty good there, Tron. I always remember like this partial um, uh, guys of Arcadia let's play on Talking Time where um, uh, where um, they described uh, Gilder's crew as this weird punk and the only black person in the game. <laughs> and you're like, I mean, they're not wrong. <laughs> the same is true of Final Fantasy VII in a way. After all, we wouldn't have gotten out of this without you. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, one of the things that bugged me about the remake, and this is not, I do not feel I am uh, qu competent or qualified to speak with any sort of like, uh, like, aha, I, I, I am smart, I have a smart brain, <laughs> smart brain me, uh, when it comes to the topic of whitewashing, but uh, it kind of ticked me off that um, uh, Reno, uh, or was it rude? It was rude. The root suddenly looked like eight skin tones lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just consistent with his original art as a problem. Yeah, but like, it's... I don't think it was consistent with like the actual character model. Would you he say that always... it is rude that they did that? <laughs> yeah, I would, actually. Also, I see what you did there, and I hate <laughs> you for it. I was just glad that FF7 Remake decided to completely ditch the characterization of Barrett as dumb that the original game had. That is good, because that annoyed me too. Like, that was like the way they framed the tutorial. Was, Barrett doesn't know how material works, so Cloud has to explain it to him. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's not great. So yeah, that's, that. that really does give a poor first impression of the character that is essentially the one, like, leading the plot when you think about it. <laughs> Yeah, Seven Remake did a lot better by him by just making him like, oh, he's still he's still angry, but like he's angry for reasons that totally make sense, and also he's not stupid about it. Also, it might hit a little bit differently nowadays that he's fighting a corporation that is trying to destroy the entire planet just to make a little. Extra it fucking money. hit that way then. Like that was <laughs> clearly the point. They were just more confident about it now. Incidentally, these lovely credits repeatedly are making references to the pocket station, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about how that absolutely existed. It's like I, I... Remember Tamagotchis? What if your PlayStation had a Tamagotchi? Remember how the Dreamcast had VMUs? This is what they were afraid of. <laughs> yes. I always kind of wanted to play the Final Fantasy VIII, like, Kokomo Quest. Or Chocobo World? World? Yes. Chocobo World was available on the PC for Oh. But, uh, it was treated as like a separate executable, but um, I had a friend whose memory card the uh, US version of FF8 thought was a pocket station and so uh, I saw the tutorial for uh, Chocobo World 
Interesting. And that was it. But they had they had translated it because at the time Sony had intimated their intention of bringing the Pocket Station to the U.S. and they just sort of said, hmm, and that didn't. <laughs> I think Alpha Three also had Pocket Station compatibility in Japan. That makes sense. I feel like the other thing might have been that it was known for was like Doko Demo Isho might have had Pocket Station compatibility. Remember Doko Demo Isho? No. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> it was a game about like these horrible, horrible cartoon cats. But remember the two characters in Street, Street Fighter Cross Tekken that were cats that no one had any idea what they were from? <laughs> no. Nope. Vaguely. I figured Callie might know this. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they were they were the cats from Doko Demo Isho. It was of kind of a... So, so he kind of treated them as PlayStation mascots in Japan for a while. Oh, the, the Servbots have a little party afterwards. Tron is happy. Remember Talk Man? 41 characters. No! <laughs> Was it like Talk the Man? Walkman? No, Talkman Talkman was like a PSP piece of software where you plugged a microphone into the PSP and it would try to like translate for you when people spoke in the microphone. And it featured a horrible talking talking what? A horrible talking bird. Look at the word. <laughs> or, no, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's running I'm their not mic? here for your fucking surf and bird references. Uh, it might be me. I have a fan on. I was gonna say it's windy somewhere. Get that off. That better? Yes, thank you. Okay, it was me. <laughs> this stew's pretty good. Did you make this number 36? Yes, Miss Trot. Thank you. Pay attention to me when I'm talking to you! I like that Tron Bond very dedicatedly enjoys her serve bots more than her actual family. <laughs> I mean, she's right, too. <laughs> yes. I'm proud of you! Thanks! And she's properly proud of her favorite serve bot, who has a red hat. <laughs> That's red head piece. Technically, they'd all have red head pieces, but she could only afford one. Wow. <laughs> and that's why it goes on the paper. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was hard work. Very good. Like you all, good. just some of you more than others. It was tough. <laughs> You're all cool. Some of you are cooler than others. Of course, you it's me, I'm the least cool. Box that the gold refractor was in, right? And the secret ending reveals the that the favorite serve bot is the reason everyone is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's a lesson That's about cool. capitalism or something going on there. Fucking brutal. <laughs> hey, it's the old anti-villain way. They, they have their really big score and then for silly reasons, guess what? It doesn't exist anymore. Yep. Every reset back to zero. Yep. Just in time for Mega Man Legends. Thank you for playing. I just put a link to some Talkman writers slash ads. And special thanks to you. Thank you for playing. You were the most favorite serve bot all along. It was you. you. Number 22. All right, well, that's The Misadventures of Tron Bond. It is... Yeah, it's 10-10. I think we'll just call it for the evening. Um, oh, Mick. What's coming next after the, uh, the the legends are over? I I do not know. We haven't decided. Yeah, that is something that we can yet. figure out. I mean, the reason <laughs> we did Mega Man Legends was because I think while we were doing um, that one that I'm never doing a let's play of... The uh, <laughs> we kept finally like, just doing that. I love how you like you kneecapped yourself, so I wouldn't <laughs> kneecap you. That's uh, that's 
There's something to be said for that. But yes, as we were doing that other game, we kept making references to Mega Man Legends, so it seemed only really natural to do that next. We we haven't been making nearly enough references to other games to justify anything. I mean, there's all sorts of things I could play if I wanted to do that. Yeah, I that's, still kind of want to do a uh, Killer Seven, but it's that that's an investment. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you gotta commit. Well, you know what? I think I'm I think I'm ready to to take the plunge on that. So if you guys are all with me taking over for a few weeks, I think I could um. Uh, I think I could um, uh, start that off. That sounds like an after. interesting possibility. Yeah. After yeah. Um, uh, after Mega Man Legends is done, of course. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. We'll, be, yeah. we'll be starting Mega Man Legends 2 next week, and I don't know, maybe we'll have a vote or something to figure out what we do with, like, Killer7, and then after that... It's just going to be a vote amongst ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a vote <laughs> among everyone who I'm talking to right now. No, if, I'm, I'm gonna vote. I'm gonna vote for Death by Degrees. <laughs> We're going back yeah, to Death by Degrees. I need you. I need you to understand, Callie Scrub. If the game is bad enough, I'm the one that has to play it. So. <laughs> but for now, be careful of what you try to suggest. Subject me to. <laughs> what? When did that get decided? <laughs> just, That's just the law of the universe. Just the way it goes. Good night, everybody. <laughs>